Now I'll discuss three P-wave patterns in atrial enlargement. One is P pulmonal in right atrial enlargement. The second is P mitral in left atrial enlargement. And the third is P tricuspidal which occurs in biatrial enlargement. We will see these patterns. This is the P pulmonal pattern seen in right atrial overload. Tall, peaked, sharp P waves with an arrow width. When the width of the P wave is increased, it is left atrial enlargement. When the height is increased or amplitude increased, it is right atrial enlargement. This is the P pulmonal, sharp P waves in inferior leads, usually 2, 3 and AVF. Corresponding to that, there will be a sharp initial deflection in V1 also in P pulmonal. The dimension described is that the height of the P wave should be more than 2.5 millimeters in a standard ECG. That is P pulmonal. Then there is other description like P congenital, but that I will not go into. That depends on the axis of the P wave. That cannot be described in a single leg. Now we will come to P mitral. Initial component of the P wave is due to right atrial enlargement, right atrial component and second component is due to left atrium. So in P mitral when left atrium is enlarged, the second component becomes more prominent and the width also is increased because there is more time for activation of left atrium which is enlarged. So the width is increased. If the width of the P wave is more than 2.5 then it is left atrial enlargement and the height of the second wave is more in P mitral. Second component of the P wave is more in P mitral. That is because delayed activation is occurring in left atrium. First right atrium gets activated and then only left atrium gets activated. That's why second part is uh, more in P mitral. Uh, corresponding to this in V1 there will be an initial small or a small positive component followed by a negative component that is a negative component will be there in V1. So the prominent negative component in V1 will indicate P mitral or rather it will be indicating left atrial overload while a prominent positive component will occur in P pulmonal or right atrial overload. When both are there, you will have both features, a tall as well as wide P wave in biatrial overload. In V1, there will be a initial peak P wave and second component will be broad and negative in V1, that is biatrial enlargement. Another peculiar P wave which has been described in biatrial enlargement is P tricuspidal. This is not seen in all types of biatrial enlargement. This was initially described in tricuspid atresia. That is why the name came as P tricuspidal. In tricuspid atresia, what happens is that right atrium is overloaded because there is no outflow into the uh, right ventricle. Then next is uh, for survival there should be an AST and the blood shunts into the left atrium. So left atrium also is overloaded and then it goes into the left ventricle and if there is a VST it will go from left ventricle to right ventricle to pulmonary artery. Sometimes tricuspid atresia can be associated with pulmonary atresia as well. Then the blood from left ventricle will not go into the right ventricle. It will be pumped up to the aorta and for survival lung flow depends on patent ductus arteriosus. So different possibilities are there. So P tricuspidal is an evidence of biatrial enlargement but predominantly it is right atrial as in tricuspid atresia. That's why the initial component is taller than the second component. This is mirror image of P mitral. This is a rare finding. Uh, you seldom see ECGs of P tricuspidal. So that's for just 
in academic interest many of you are unlikely to see p tricuspidale on an ecg